I was able to tighten my my leather saddle in Addis Ababa and uh, it was a long time due and it changed uh, the position I see it of a few millimeters and this is the third day pushing ever since I left Addis and my knees hurts and I think it's due to the fact that I changed the position of the my sitting position even if it's only a few millimeters my knees are very sensitive or sensible I'm not sure which is, what's the right word but yeah they hurt especially going up here and there is lots of going up in Ethiopia because it's either going up or down it's not flat Hello. Where are you going? Home. Hello, man with an AK-47. my ambronite meal one two three four five Six, maybe seven. I'm really hungry. Now a bit more water. The meal is ready. Now I'll shake it a bit. Ambronite night meal is ready. Bon appetito. Climbing again, it's 3.30, I did about 105 kilometers, but I'm really, really tired and I really need to eat something. I'll have to climb again up there, then is a little downhill and there should be another three to five kilometers of climbing and then I should arrive to a village maybe I rest there maybe I'll try to find a place where I can pitch my tent maybe a church or something 
because for today I'm, I'm done. When I arrive there, I probably, well, there will be probably 115 kilometers on my, on the day. And I think for today is enough because I'm really tired. My knee still hurts a bit. And also I feel like I'm getting some cramps in my legs. Last night it did rain. I guess it will rain today during the day. It's kind of chilly because we are almost at 2,600, 2,700 above the sea level. Oh wow. Look at this view. It's great, <laughs> but uh, just a drop of like about a thousand meter. But then I'll have to go up again. So, good news and bad news. Let's enjoy the view and the descent for the moment. I'm glad the, the road was smoothly paved so I could uh, do the downhill at a decent speed, even though the rock is not properly attached to the fork, so I have to be careful because when you get speed, the weight forces are much higher. The problem now is I'll have to climb up over a thousand meters. I think it's 1.1, 1 .1, well, 1100 meters that I have to climb up. To know how long is the, the climb.
trying to fix these things. Nobody really understands it. Look at the three hippos there. Four. One, two, three, four. They're going down. Or they're coming up. Good morning, guys. I'm in Bahirdar. And come with me and I'll get you up to speed a little bit with us things first. So, <coughs> the bracket. <coughs> I had a stain teal bracket, remember, with a brace on like this one, on this side of the fork, and it snapped. Uh, the the tarmat was really wobbly, and I got a, a big um, a big jump basically, and it snapped. <coughs> and on the other side, I snapped the attachment of the orthodox pannier, so it was. Uh, Two broken things in uh, in one in one go, but in Bahirdar, after a long struggling search, I was able to get this uh, piece of metal done. It's a pretty shitty piece of metal, and uh, they charged me about twenty euros for that, which is a ridiculous price because. Uh, um, I think for the same price in uh, in Namibia, I got two brackets done in stainless steel, and uh, look, a perfect, perfect job, yeah. And uh, the problem was that uh, in in Kampala, I threw away one of these brackets because I thought I was not gonna need it anymore because it was not gonna break till Cairo. But I was wrong, obviously. And I had to struggle. <clears throat> and uh, I also lost lots of weight getting into Bahirdar because I didn't feel well. I couldn't eat. It happens to me a few times in this trip. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I saw, I, I look at me in a mirror and uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, a good feeling. Like I could see all my bones here and I lost lots of weight and I didn't feel power on the bike. And uh, I was looking forward to spend a few days here in Bahirdar and rest and I had some uh, couchsurfing hosts uh, that offered me to, to, to host me for, for a few days and uh, unfortunately I picked uh, one guy that um, yeah, had a very bad experience so I couldn't stay at his house and uh, I think it's the first time in three years and a half that I'm considering to leave a negative review on couch surfing although okay so it was a it was an awful experience and that i had on couch surfing and i felt uh, cheated and took advantage of so yesterday i i just wanted to leave the city and uh, i feel cheated also with the bracket that um, i got done and uh, I was really upset and I was gonna leave the city but it was already like 2 p.m. and I didn't feel like uh, cycling under the heat and I was still f feeling very weak and tired and so I checked on I Overlander and there was this uh, lodge in a garden outside uh, leaving the, the city and uh, I thought to check it out and at the end I ended up um, getting a room here was 500 beers it's uh, I think it's 15 17 euros and uh, I think it's uh, the 15 17 euros that uh, better spent in uh, in Africa because uh, the room is very clean which is uh, very very rare in uh, in Ethiopia the shower was really hot and I was able to shower for the first time ever since I left Addis and I also hand wash my clothes and, uh, and I was able to have a few hours of rest not thinking about anything charge my batteries and charge my phone and, and everything so I think it was, uh, it was badly needed and the bed was comfortable as well and the bedroom is big 
uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, yeah, those are my panniers and uh, there was space for, for my bike. Uh, Wi-Fi didn't work obviously, but it, that's okay. Um, and uh, I had breakfast, I had uh, dinner yesterday, um, the, the, the price was fair and uh, the breakfast was included in the, in the, in the room. And uh, it was pretty quiet because the city is very messy and there's a nice garden around. This is uh, this is coffee, by the way. Yeah, this is a coffee plant. There's some bananas. Um, it it was a quiet place. I wanted to stay an extra day, but uh, I feel I need to get going because my Sudanese visa. I'm already two weeks into it, <coughs> and um, and it's only 30 days. So I would like to get to the border uh, as soon as possible, even though I really, really need an extra day of rest. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you just uh, have to push it through. And um, it's going to be less than, I think, four days to the border. And then I, I will enter Sudan, which I'm a bit, a little apprehensive because there is a military coup uh, um, happening at the moment. Uh, the president uh, was arrested, um, I think the day before yesterday, so I don't know what's the situation there. Everybody seems to be happy about uh, the military coup, but I think when they will realize that it's a military coup, they might not be that happy. And uh, so far they're just happy that the, the president is uh, no longer there. And also, I don't know if I will be able to renew my visa because uh, I don't think I can cross Sudan in uh, in two weeks uh, or even less because it's uh, very hot and uh, just loads of headwind in the desert. And uh, we'll see. Anyway, I just wanted to bring you up to speed, guys. I'm uh, almost as good to go. I have a new bracket there. And uh, also I removed, I had this, uh, this spare tire in one of the panniers and uh, I removed it and placed it here so that uh, I have less weight on my, um, on my, on my fork and um, yeah, hopefully everything goes well uh, from here to the border. It's also like uh, one of the areas in Ethiopia where people get uh, thrown more stones and get more damage done. Um, hopefully I don't get anything stolen off my bike and uh, I don't get hurt by the stones. I will wear the helmet so when I pass through uh, hills or canyon, um, even if, they, if I get some stones in my head, they shouldn't do any damage. Uh, other than that, I'll see you soon.